we are back on the small scale group build and we're doing some actual assembly this time before we decide to start changing things again and we're attaching the fenders to the frame now one thing I want to mention while doing this is that the fenders have to slot into these two slot, small slots in the frame here and that in effect gives you a tab that the chassis actually rests on now if you look at the instructions it doesn't really give you an order in which anything's supposed to go together so you just kind of have to figure it out uh, as you go along so um, I decided to just do some test fitting which I probably should have done before I painted it but uh, duh uh -huh. and found that it's a very tight fit to get these tabs into the slots on the uh, on the frame without enlarging them and the slot this rear slot here was not even fully formed into the frame so I have to actually open it up and make a slot here which I'm doing just by using one of my micro files just to open it up it's large enough to get the tab to slide in to the frame I opened up the front one but the rear one still needs a bit more work as that is not going at all so we're gonna work on that a little bit so uh, you guys hang out while I uh, do a little filing here So there we go, we have both fenders mounted to the frame. Now they don't go flush against the frame as they have a small stop on each side molded in. So there we go, it's a very tight fit, especially on this side because of the fact that I had to actually make the hole for it. Now let's just check how I'm trying to do all of this touching the chrome as little as possible. And now once we have the fenders installed, there is a whereas before it was a very loose fit and wasn't really sure where the chassis would slot in to the frame. It's geniusly designed here so that now there is a perfect resting point for the chassis which holds it exactly in the right position. Oh, just that I note the interior of the uh, chassis here, which extends a little bit outside of the body, uh, was done with the Gundam marker, which gives you, which is, in my opinion, a vast improvement over the, um, the other famous chrome pen, the... Let's see if I can actually figure out what the name of this other chrome pen was. Uh, I have one right here. Yes. If it's a toss, if it's a comparison between the Molotov chrome and the Gundam, the Gundam wins, in my opinion. I'm gonna have to definitely do a test on these two at some point. Alright, so let's get back to what we're doing here. So now we have the fenders attached. Now we have to work on some more chassis modifications. As we have a spot for the wheels, uh, this front seat here. Now, the only issue with that is firewall is going to sit somewhere right about here and as you can see we have that tunnel there which is visible we also have no pedals and no shifter so we're going to do something about that let's do some thinking and uh, see if we can come up with a solution now 
All right, guys, the more I start with pre-assembly of this thing, the more I realize how really it's kind of ingeniously designed because it looks as if there is no real way to figure out where anything goes. But as you're putting it together, you're going to find that pieces as they slot and fit in together, each one has a mounting point or some sort of resting point for another part. So it all just kind of goes together and each part provides a mounting point for another part. I was trying to figure out where the firewall would sit as it's not really very clear in the instructions. Um, I'll show them to you right now. For the firewall location, it just shows it going into the body, not really where it's supposed to mount. So there's a lot of test fitting involved. So what I did was I installed the windshield frame into the car and then I couldn't figure out whether whoops, the dashboard sat here or inside the body. So with the windshield frame installed, and this is the interesting part, there's two ridges in the body on each side here. And then the windshield frame provides the top mounting part the top mounting point for the dash and gives you a perfect spot to sit the dash right inside the body there. I don't know if you guys can see that there. But that gives a perfect resting spot for the dashboard and the firewall itself so that you don't have to actually figure it out because it's all done for you. This along with these mounting tabs here as I explained earlier which gives the chassis a perfect resting spot on the frame. The tab from the windshield and these two tabs on the inside of the body give you a perfect resting spot for the dashboard. Really kind of uh, well thought out for such a little kit. I'm just discovering this now as I'm slowly putting it together. And uh, good job on you guys because I'm trying to figure out what to do with the floor here. So if I put the dashboard in, still haven't figured out what this peg here is for, but I'm sure it'll come up as I'm putting the car together. And I assemble the upper and lower parts of the body, the chassis and the body together. Now the black line I put here is the forward edge of the seat. As I'm trying to see how much of that center tunnel there will be exposed. And as we see, it won't be much. Let's just see if we can get the dashboard in there. There we go. Now, all right. Now we're going to have this much of the floor exposed, which I'm not going to be too happy with that being exposed. And you'll be able to see that hole there. So we're going to cover that up. And we're going to probably try and make a center tunnel for the transmission as we're going along here. Let's just put the wall in place where it belongs there. And there we go. Here we have, now we'll be able to get a rough estimate of where exactly And there we go. Our tunnel for the transmission, our hump over here is going to have to be this long. And then there is where we're going to try and install a shifter. Now, one of the other things we've got going on is we have the steering wheel painted up 
well, the first layer of paint as we're going to make this a sort of a rosewood color like we did with the chrome vet. As we're going to try and stick to making the exact same scheme on both these cars. We'll just see how that works out. So we'll go over how to make a redwood steering wheel right after the base coat of the Model Master's leather dries. Now we're going to start working on our center tunnel as until we get this situated what we're doing in here we're not going to be able to move forward with this build all right guys after quite a bit of uh work here i've come up with a few more details to add to this thing now if you'll see here we now have a transmission tunnel and a sh manual shifter which will hide that big hole in the floor as you can see here this area that I have shaded in is the area where the seat covers and then this line here will be where the dashboard goes and that should give us our transmission tunnel once we paint the floor or maybe use a little embossing powder I'm gonna play with seeing if embossing powder will work there um, we should have a much better looking interior than what we had before Okay, that's the first thing I was working on. Now, following that, I decided that, well, these, this plain old firewall here with nothing on it isn't really gonna work for me, so I figured I'll make some pedals for it. So here I've uh, made out a sprue, I've got our gas pedal, our clutch and brake pedal. Let's see if we can get as you can see, each one is a different shape to denote what it does. And all the edges around it also doesn't look like a piece of sprue. Once it's painted up, it should look pretty nice in there. Now I just have to space it out into the firewall, drill my holes so that they can easily mount. And we'll be ready to do some painting. All right, guys. We are still working on adding more details to this build i'm starting to wonder if i have it finished in time boy this is going to be tight i already told you about the shifter and here are the finished pedals for the firewall and now i'm working on somehow putting gauges in this thing i've got a couple of ideas with some detail parts i have so uh we'll see how it goes but right now we have to go to paint and get this firewall painted up and get these pedals done all right guys here we have our wooden steering wheel came out pretty good i think we're gonna go and give the wood a uh the dashboard now we're gonna go and do the wood paneling on as you can see actually it looks pretty good it looks almost like almost like a real nice red cherry wood which is what i was looking for as this is going to match the chrome vet perfectly so we're gonna go lay our base color on the dashboard now and then we'll come back and I'll we'll go right through the entire process of creating this wood look which I think works really great all right guys I'm just gonna walk you through how I create that wood effect on these cars so i can show you exactly what i did on the steering wheel we're going to do on the dashboard is we're going to get this a world a burled walnut redwood cherry whatever you want to call it dash so here you see let me just make sure i'm in the cameras there you go here you can see that we have our base color of model master leather on the uh, dashboard now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the varying light and dark tones in the wood and we're gonna use do that using Tamiya wooden deck tan and then a little bit of Tamiya flat black now what we're gonna do with that is we're just gonna dab some paint some of the, the wood tan and flat black on randomly such as if it has the swir all the swirl marks that you would find in uh, 
in real wood, in real wood, all the grains. Let's just clean our brush off here. And it's just going to be a very light dry brushing of the deck tan just to put small marks in it. As you know, wood does not come in one particular shade. It obviously comes in many different shades and colors and uh, that's what gives it all its texture. So what we do is we take a bit and then we don't want to do too much but we want to just dab some of the lighter color on there just to break up the the brown just a little bit so it doesn't have to be anything just random marks here and there just enough so that you can see well, after our final products that there's going to be some light and dark in the wood. And that pretty much is that for the lighter color. Now we're going to do the same thing with the flat black. And it's this combination of three different colors which just give us all our texture to the wood and all our grain to the wood. When we uh, when we apply the final color, so we're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to take flat black. I'm going to wipe off a lot of the excess. Then we're just going to, you know, throw some black on there randomly. Following some of the brown. You know, where you where you put some of the brown, follow that up with a little black. And there we go. Looks like a mess right now. But it'll all come together in one more stroke. Now we're going to do our top coat. Now the whatever what, the kind of wood you want will depend on which color you use as your top coat. As I'm going for a sort of a red cherry wood type effect, I'm going to be using the Tamiya clear red I have also for if I'm looking for a walnut type of color I'll use the Tamiya orange over the brown so now basically all we have to do is brush the red over the brown gotta get on there nice and thick so that we have our lacquer coat such as what would be on real wood. And there we go. And there you go, guys. 
as the color starts to settle in, you can see how it starts to look like real wood. You can see the grain in it. It really is a nice effect. Give it one more coat of red, I think, to really even out our color. But once it's in the car, it's going to look fantastic. But that is exactly how we get the wood effect. Like I showed you previously on the steering wheel. I'm going to have to probably give it another coat of the red. And the steering wheel has a bit more of a red color. So we're going to have to go probably another coat of red just to really bring out the redness of the coloring. Let's go ahead and just give this another coat of red. really don't be afraid to lay it on thick as the thicker you put it on there the smoother it appears and it really gives it the look of that lacquer that covers the wood all right I think that is exactly what I want so we're gonna put that to the side I'll let that sit there for a while before we can go any further with this build. But I am happy with what I'm seeing there. I have the color right where I want it. Then we'll still look just a hair darker. So you have to be very careful when you're applying the paint that you use. I did use two different bottles of the the Model Master leather, which may be accounting for the slight color difference, which technically is something that does happen as even in today's cars have quite a few of the Mercedes Benzes when we replace a wood panel the wood is never exactly the same color because as is as real wood well you can't find two pieces of real wood that would be exactly the same unless they're cut from the exact same tree so I do think that I am going to be fine with this the way it is and uh, that's it for making wood guys All right, guys, I just noticed something while mocking up the entire body. I noticed, I didn't notice for the first time that there are no side panels to this gas tank. So it just leaves an open hole in the back of the car when you have it all assembled, which you can see right through the frame. I'll just mock it up real quickly right here for you. I was not happy with that. So, I quickly just made up these, uh, let's see if I can give you a better look at it. These side panels to the, the sides of the fuel tank. So that we don't just have one big hole hanging out there in the open. In the back of the car. In the back of the car. Now I'm going to throw a little paint on it. Now, hopefully the seams won't show too much. If they do, then we'll just call them uh, welds on the gas tank. Because I am not repainting this whole thing all over again. So hopefully this will do a decent enough job of covering up what would have been a really big hole in the back of the car. Alright, we're going to keep going with this thing. Okay, because I can't leave well enough alone, I wasn't going to try and fill these seams in, but 
it really did bug me so I did use some of the Tamiya surface primer which works really good for filling in small gaps and not only works as a primer but also as a as a filler and we filled in both sides we're gonna sand them smooth in a little once this dries and hopefully we'll have a seamless tank or at least close to it so that you won't see much of it when the car is all together now this is also going to slow things down a little bit now that I have to wait for all of this to dry thoroughly so uh okay there we go I knew everything was going just a little too smoothly okay guys we have the dashboard all done and installed as you can see we just have the body mocked up we have one wheel on the, one tire on the car just checking for wheel fitment and we'll be discussing that in the next video because uh, yeah there's an issue there but as you can see here we have our wood dash the wooden steering wheel you can see the pedals let me see if I can shine a little light on that there we go you can see the whole gas pedal brake pedal and clutch which we have let's see if I can give you guys a better look at that which I fabricated for this build as this was just a plain firewall with nothing on it and I just really couldn't leave it all like that you can see the photo etch gauges and instruments on the uh, dashboard those were actually believe it or not AC duct AC uh, ducts for the gauges and then the rest are just those small dials that come in a kit this is a photo etch kit from model car garage MCG 2064 which brings all sorts of different air conditioning uh, and radio components vents all sorts of stuff really neat kit from model car garage AC and radio faces that's for a 124 for a 125th scale kit so I thought that for this small 143rd uh, scale kit the gauges the AC ducts actually were the perfect size for gauges on the car so uh, that's what they became which I think worked out pretty neat in a car this small so the interior is almost done we're still working on a few other components and we had to redo the chassis the gas tank as I explained earlier so that's in paint right now and uh, we're getting all the few remaining parts together so hopefully barring any other unforeseen details which I decide to throw on this thing oh one other thing I forgot to mention there is glass in the window frame now the kit didn't bring any clear parts but I was like ah, eh, well you know what I can't leave it that way so no you probably can't tell here but there is actually glass in the window frame so it's coming together nicely guys so we should make it before the end of the month all right that's it I'm gonna see you on the next one and uh, where might be the last uh, episode in this one because we're coming together pretty quick now all right, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, give a thumbs up because it really helps. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.